योगो योग विधाम प्रधान पुषेश्वर नार सिंह श्रीमान केशव पुषोत्तम वेलकम बैक टू द विष्णु सहसाम प्ले लिस्ट लेडीज एंड जेंटमेन we are here with text 16 and in the last two verses we had seen how bhishma had uh, established the chronology of establishing krishna as god himself and by saying things like he is um the one who pervades the entire universe the one who is worshiped in the vedas one who is the supreme controller one who knows the present past future and uh, he is the maintainer of all living beings and then he also said his putatma very pure or uh, i mean supremely pure not very pure <laughs> and he is also the paramatma and he is the muktam paramagati he is the ultimate goal and destination of the liberated souls and he is eternally the uh, supreme purusha He is the witness, sakshi of everything, and knows what happens to all living entities. Chetragnya. He is also infallible, akchara, one who can never fall down. So today's verse, so these two previous verses were very crucial because this instantiate Krishna's position. Because many times people ask that, why should we read the Vishnu Sahasram? So this is these 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 are the reasons why you should read. Right. Now we go to text number sixteen. Yogo Yoga Vidham Neta. He is the auspicious reservoir of yogic perfection, and success in yoga practice depends upon him. He is the leader of those advanced in yoga. Yog Yoga Vidham Neta. Neta means leader, and he is the supreme controller of the material universe. and all living entities pradhana purushesh varah pradhana means prime purusha ishwarah which means ruler uh, is the uh, ishwara of all the purushas and again here the word purusha does not refer to men or male it refers to everybody in general or this also refers to this purusha here not only refers to human beings this also refers to uh somebody like the celestial you know like brahma indra shiva chandra agni and all of them so he is the ishwara of all of them also so there are two contexts of this word purusheshwara and it's not only purusheshwara it's pradhana purusheshwara even though he has appeared in half man half lion incarnation that is why it is said here nara simha vapu shrima He has appeared in a half man, half lion incarnation. He is extremely handsome, Shri Man. What is the meaning of the word Shri Man? Shri Man is um, this is generally referred to a male. Uh, Shri Man means uh, like we have the word uh, Shakti Man. Okay, uh, what does the word Shakti Man refers to? Or uh, Balavan? Okay, Balavan is a person who has a lot of strength. All right, Van. and shakti man also refers to somebody has who has lot of uh, you know power kind of so the word shri man so generally uh, when some respected personality is addressed then they are always addressed as shri man shri man so and so shri man so and so like this in the vedas so one who has shri who is shri shri is uh, lakshmi herself right therefore we say jai shri ram okay we say jai shri krishna so now many times uh, people they think that uh, why uh, why don't we say you know jai sita ram or jai uh, jai rukmini krishna or you know jai uh, lakshmi krishna sometimes but when when we say shri they are by default included in that all right he is the father of brahma and shiva keshava and he is the supreme purusha purushottama in this in his commentary shila balde vidyabhushan quotes lord shiva's explanation of the name keshava so lord shiva explains this uh, what keshava ka iti brahmano nama isho ham sarva dehina avam tavanga sambhuta sambhutao tasmat keshava nama bhak 
Ka is the name of Brahma and I, Shiva, am known to known as Isha because I am the master of all living entities who reside in the material bodies. O Lord Krishna, because we are born from your body, you are therefore known as Keshava, father of Brahma and Shiva. Lord Krishna is known as Purushottam because he is the best of all persons, including both conditioned and liberated souls. The Lord himself has explained the meaning of this name in the Bhagavad Gita, 15th chapter, 18th verse. Yasmat charam atitoham aksharad api kotamam. Kotama, sorry. Atosmi loke vedecha pratita purushottama. Because I am transcendental, beyond the fallible and infallible. And because I am the greatest, I am celebrated both in the world and in the Vedas as that Supreme Person. This is a very beautiful verse. This verse talks about so many things, you know. So let's discuss uh, in brief what the context of this verse is. And as usual, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to it below. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your horoscope, please go to my website down below, exoticastrology.in. Yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him in the Vishnu Sasana. Yogo Yoga Vidham Neta. It's not Yogo Yogo. It's not Yoga Yoga. It's Yogo Yoga Vidham Neta. He's the auspicious reservoir of all yogic perfection. And success in yoga practice depends upon him. So why does it say that success of yoga practice depends upon him? Because spiritual elevation is not obtained. It is awarded. You cannot you cannot obtain moksha. You cannot obtain spiritual liberation by your own progress, by your own prowess, your austerities, your strength, your power, your determination. You cannot do that. By doing all this, we can show our sincerity to God. But ultimately, it is up to Him. He grants it or not. All right. So it has to be, it has, it is something which is awarded. It's like it descends from the top. It's not ascending, it's descending. Right, uh, material world is always ascending. Oh, so I want this, I want this, I want money, I want a good spouse, I want a rich spouse, you know, I want a beautiful spouse, I want you know, a big bungalow, I want the best car, I want you know, the best children, you know, I want the best parents, I want, 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 want. I want to keep going high, 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 high. But spiritual life, uh, in spiritual life, we also have to go high, but that only happens if it descends from the top. Okay, so we cannot force spiritual elevation upon us or on anybody. That's not possible. In material life, you could do that to some extent, depending on your karma. But in spiritual life, zero. You cannot do that. So what do we do in spiritual life? We do the spiritual practices and we are obedient and uh, submissive to the Guru and the instruction of the scriptures. And then when God sees that we are following what his representatives have told us to follow, then the progress happens actually. Okay. Many times people ask that, oh, can you explain scientifically, you know, what happens when we chant mantras or read Gita? Now, of course, we can explain that your mind will be sharp and you'll be more peaceful, more calm, but then uh, there's so many explanations what happens. But ultimately, even if you know everything, if, if Krishna decides not to bless you for some reason, because of some aparad which you have committed, then no mantra, nothing is going to work. Right, so therefore it says the success of yoga, yoga practice depends upon him actually. Okay, he's the leader of those advanced in yoga. Yoga vidham neta, okay. yoga, yoga vidham neta. He's the leader of those advanced in yoga. What does this, what does this mean? This means he, uh, he himself is a perfect yogi. Okay? Perfect yogi is uh, fully cognizant of his or her abilities and uh, is fully situated in spiritual enlightenment. Okay, there is no tinge of material desire in the perfection stage of yoga, right? So, uh, Krishna is also like that. He also doesn't have any material desire. Okay? He has spiritual desires, but he doesn't have any material desire, which means he, he doesn't have any desire to enjoy, you know, uh, like some something related to this material world. 
that is why he's the leader and he's also known as uh, yogish yogishwar all right and he is the uh, he is the supreme controller of the material universe and all living entities pradhana purusheshwara okay. so they are very important statement because um, even krishna says in the gitana bhoktaram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram suridam sarva bhutanam yatva mam shantim rachati and i am the enjoyer controller and proprietor of everything that exists <laughs> and krishna is also known as uh, anant koti brahmand nayak which means all the uh, ananta means endless koti means you know millions it's like a big number brahmand is referring to the different material universes and spiritual realm also ananta koti brahmand nayak nayak means he is the leader he is the owner he is the proprietor he is the controller so the same thing is said here he is the supreme controller of the material universe and all living entities so now you see what bhishma is doing is very smart of course he is one of the 12 mahajans <laughs> he has to be smart so uh in the 14th verse he had established the supremacy of vishnu and then in the 15th verse he established the purity you know he said putatma paramatma cha the internal stuff now he is saying uh, about you know this yoga and all this you know like the spiritual paths actually okay so very smart he is you know what what look what he is doing you know he is now instantiating the uh, abhideya actually okay sambandha abhideya prayojan three things are there so he is the supreme controller of the material universe and all living entities nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yo vidadati kama this is also very prominent in the shopishaba even though he has appeared as a half man half lion incarnation narasimha vapu he is extremely handsome shriman right shriman means as i said one who has uh, qualities of goddess lakshmi which represents you know uh, beauty opulence uh, like you know wealth uh, good behavior and all all the nice things of this world actually they come from goddess lakshmi okay so shriman means one who is blessed by lakshmi okay now here um, he is of course he is not blessed by lakshmi he is uh, Uh, lakshmi devi is uh, i mean lakshmi lakshmi ji is not blessing him lakshmi ji is his consort all right so but the word shriman is used or in this context the word shriman doesn't mean one who is blessed by lakshmi uh, it means one who has lakshmi right all the time and here lakshmi doesn't mean money as in kali yuga it is uh, primarily thought of and he has appeared in a half man half lion so now vishma is instantiating uh, his position again he reinstantiates it before as a supreme controller okay he is doing it again and again he is reminding us okay then vishma is going into the uh, variegatedness of vishnu so he is telling that he has appeared in a half man half lion incarnation nara simha vapu as we all know to protect the great prahlad who is one of the 12 mahajans uh, lord vishnu had taken an incarnation known as nara simha half man half lion and he ripped apart the stomach of hiranyakashipu he is extremely handsome he is the father of brahma and shiva keshava and he is the supreme person purushottama the word keshava's meaning has been explained here and the word keshava also means one who has very beautiful hair a curly locks of hair and he is the supreme person purushottama okay so um, lord ram he is known as maryada purushottam one who is very strict uh, strictly adhering to uh, the principles which the scriptures have laid down for human beings now uh, in fact there is an example in the ramayana where ram lakshman and vishwamitra muni goes to a place where devi ahilya was uh, doing penance in the form of a stone because uh, because indra and ahilya had you uh, united which is uh, prohibited as per scriptural injunctions because ahilya devi was married to somebody Uh, to gautam rishi of course and then indra was cursed and ahilya also got a curse from gautam rishi that 
you will uh, you will remain like a stone un until Lord Ram comes and delivers you. Vishnu comes in form of Ram and delivers you. So Vishwamitra Muni went there with Ram Lakshman and said, "Oh, my dear Ram, please put your foot on uh, this stone. And the moment you do this, then Alia Devi will appear in her true glory again." Her penance is now complete. But then Lord Ram was hesitant to do that. Why? Because, uh, because he's Mariada Purushottam and uh, the code of the scriptures is that a man is not supposed to touch any other woman apart from uh, his wife. Okay? And even a woman is not supposed to touch any other man apart from her husband. That, that's not allowed in the Vedic scriptures. So if Lord Ram would touch this uh, stone, uh, who is actually not a stone, it's uh, Devi Ahilya actually, then this uh, principle of Mariana Purushottam would have been violated. So then what to do? Very difficult situation. Do you disobey the instruction of your Guru Maharaj, Vishwamitra Muni, or do you follow the rules and the regulations of the scripture? So uh, Lord Ram did something very amazing. He he was about to put his foot and uh, that time there was some dust particles because they were walking and those dust particles from his foot had fallen into this uh, stone and then immediately the stone disappeared and Devi Ahilya appeared. So Lord Ram actually did not uh, touch uh, Sita Devi actually. Okay. Uh, so sorry, Ahilya Devi. Uh, his the dust particles had uh, delivered Devi Ahilya actually. Okay, so it's a very interesting story. You know, so many things we can discuss regarding this. And um, then Krishna is known as a uh, Purna Purushottam, and Vishnu is known as Lila Purushottam. So here the meaning of the word Keshava has been explained. So Lord Shiva is telling Kai is the name of Brahma, and I am known as Isha, and that is why Lord Shiva is also known as Pashupati Nath. He is known as Pashupati, which means he is the controller of all the Pashus. Here, Pashu doesn't mean animals. A pashu also means anybody who has a material body. They are also considered as Pashus. So, Lord Shiva is uh, he's the controller of this material world. Okay? And he, as you know, and Lord Shiva says, I am the master of all living entities who reside in material bodies. That's why he is known as Pashupatina. O oh Lord Krishna, because we are born from your body, you are therefore known as Keshava, okay? the father of Brahma and Shiva. Ka and Isha, Keshava. Wow, beautiful. Lord Krishna is known as Purushottam. This has been explained later again, right? And Krishna himself explained this. Uh, because I am transcendental beyond both the fallible and infallible, and because I am the greatest, I am celebrated both in the world and in the Vedas as the Supreme Person. Like we have the Purusha Shukta prayers where they sing, you know, Om Sahastra Shesha Purusha. It's a very beautiful prayer. You can read it sometimes. Okay. And the thing is, um, here Bhishma has very beautifully uh, given us the context of different things like yoga and uh, the different avatars and different names of uh, Vishnu, all right? So Bhishma is again and again and again establishing the supremacy. You see, again he's telling, you know, Purushottama, he's telling. Then he's telling Narasimha. Okay, Narasimha is Narasimha Dev, of course. So Pradhana Purusheshwara, again the same. The second and the fourth line is almost the same. But in the fourth line, the word Keshava is again there. That again explains that he is the source of Brahma and Shiva. So this is how Bhishma is uh, taking us through the Vishnu Sastana, all right? So that uh, nobody can uh, actually uh, question that why are you, uh, wh what's so great about the Vishnu Sastana? What is so great about it, all right? So this is the greatness uh, which he's explaining in every verse with a different context, okay? And therefore, many times uh, we do a lot of yoga and meditation and spiritual practices, but we have to understand that uh, these are these are very good. Uh, we should be doing the prescribed uh, practices from our guru. Uh, but at the same time, we have to understand that spiritual progress is not obtained; it is awarded. Okay. 
So therefore, the only thing we can do is we can uh, follow the standards at best of our capacity, to the best of our capacity. And then we can wait for uh, his blessings. As they say, you sow the seeds and you wait till the rains come. Okay. But if the rains don't come, then how will the seeds grow, right? Uh, that cannot happen. That's not possible. Uh, I mean, in a traditional setting, you know, nowadays, of course, you can put some <laughs> irrigation and water supply and all this. But in general, for uh, Vedic lifestyle, it doesn't work like that. Okay, For spiritual life, it does, definitely doesn't work like that. Okay, So therefore, the only thing we can do when we are doing yoga or you know like uh, any spiritual practices like mantra meditation or some advanced pranayama or you know reading Bhagavad Gita is we can show our sincerity to God by doing the best okay, by giving 100% but uh, with an understanding that uh, unless our Guru is pleased with us then God won't be pleased with us okay? therefore it is essential that we take shelter of Guru Krishna says in the Gita Vidhi Prani Patena Alright, this is a very important shloka. Okay. Otherwise, we may be doing so many things for years and years and years and we may not make any spiritual progress. Now you know the reason why. Because you are trying to obtain spiritual progress, which doesn't happen. So spiritual elevation is awarded through a guru. Okay. Do not forget that. So the guru's shelter is very, very, very essential. And if you do not have a guru, then you should pray to Lord Vishnu that please send me a guru. Only you can do it as you had sent Narad Muni for Dhruva Maharaj. Okay. So that is what we can pray and we can keep doing our practices from our side. Then when the right time comes, the guru will appear in front of you. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. And if you're new, then please subscribe to the channel and watch these other videos in this playlist. And if you want a consultation, please go to my website down below, exoticastrology.in. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you'll find him. And if you want to see other videos on Guru, I will put it here. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good day.